level. So I first want to talk about what the kidneys do. The kidneys filter your blood and they filter, in fact, about 180 uh, liters of fluid every single day. So our Kidneys have these little filters in them, and so all of the blood is filtered through that. And our kidneys are put through a lot, so they do a lot. And there's these tiny little filtration units called nephrons. And when these are get damaged over time, they can cause havoc in the body. So again, the kidneys remove a lot of waste from the body. So naturally, it is normal that humans uh, urine is yellow without foam. Okay. But there are many factors such as diet medications that may cause a change of its color to even look a little bit darker or whatever. But tonight we're going to talk about like what causes foamy urine. And, 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 you know, it's kind of unnerving because a lot of people get really freaked out because they've been told by their medical doctors, if you have any foam in your urine, oh my word, you're going to die. Right. Well, I want to just share with you tonight that there are other things that could be causing foamy urine. So one of them is cleaning agents in the toilet bowl. So if you are doing a lot of cleaning and you have, uh, you know, Clorox or some of these other products that you use for cleaning, that can interact with the urine. Urine is very acidic, right? And it can interact with that and cause foam. So again, if you are having foamy urine, I want you to pay attention to some of these things I'm teaching you tonight to just see if this will is maybe the cause. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, if you have a full bladder, meaning if you're holding your, your uh, urine a lot, when you go, you're putting a lot of pressure, you're causing forced urine excretion, and that quickly goes into the toilet, and then what happens is it comes out causing the formation of foam because it's coming out with such full force. I know that sounds silly, but that can be a cause, so pay attention to that. Maybe... Uh, try to go to the bathroom a little bit more often or don't wait till you're totally full and just see if that also helps, okay? Number three, dehydration. Dehydration is a major factor that can result in foam in the urine because dehydration causes the urine concentration of foam to occur. So the condition is not serious, but you should try to pay attention to your body and keep it hydrated because that could be um, one of the reasons why you're having foamy urine. Okay. Number four, stress and anxiety. I know you guys don't want to hear this because stress and anxiety seem to have a lot of issues with imbalance in the body, but urine is affected by stress because the body is under enormous pressure. And this pressure leads to hormonal imbalances as a result of the increase of the amount of albumum and protein in the body. And that presents a typical state of low concentration, which leads to the formation of uh, fo foamy foam in the urine. Number five, intense exercise, because that, again, causes protein in the urine. So if you are exercising very intense, now I'm not talking about going on long walks or anything like that, but I'm talking about like really intense exercise. That can be a cause of foam in the urine because, again, you're releasing a lot of proteins and stuff in the body. And your, your kidneys have to filter through all that, right? Um, number six, well, this is kind of obvious, but, but the presence of protein <laughs> in the urine can also cause foamy urine. So this is a situation where you have protein spilling off into the urine and normally you don't have a lot of protein in the urine. So if you're exercising really aggressively or, or you're eating a lot of more protein than your body needs and sometimes this can be caused by protein powders or anybody that's high in you know, eating a lot of protein, okay? Again, remember our, our kidneys filter out over 180 liters of fluid every single day and only 2% of that is excreted into the urine. So if you're eating too much protein and you're overloading your body with um, too much actual physical exercise or too much protein, like in the form of shakes or animal protein, especially red meat, that could be potentially what's causing it. All right, so again, when you eat a lot of protein, right, and your body has to filter that out, it can be excreted as protein in the urine, and that's uh, called albumum. That's another name for protein. Number uh, seven, kidney damage. Now, I did a whole video just on what things can cause actual damage to the kidney, and there's quite a few, so you should go back and watch that video. It's here in, if you go up to the top here and click on media, you'll find a video I did on kidneys, but another reason for the large amounts of protein in the urine is that the kidneys may be damaged. And in this case, you will want an analysis of the urine. You want to bring that to your doctor. So if you think you might have 
kidney damage, um, you can go get some of these tests done or vice versa. If you do already been diagnosed with kidney damage, then you might have some foamy urine. But the best tests to get for these are um, GFR, which is a glomerular filtration rate because this GFR blood test checks how well your kidneys are working. It's checking the apparatus of how well your kidneys are filtering, right? Um, and your kidneys have these little tiny glomeri. I showed you a video, of, a clip of that earlier. And these filters help remove the waste and excess fluid from the blood. So GFR would be a really good indication or a really good test to take to determine how well your body is filtering. The other one is um, the albumum test, which is a, a urine test. And this is the actual albumum is a protein. So it's going to actually show us in the urine how much protein you have. And then BUN, which is another blood test, is called blood urea nitrogen. And this is a test that measures the amount of nitrogen in the blood that comes from the waste product urea. So urea is made when protein is broken down in the body and urea is made in the liver and passed out of the body in your urine, okay? So BUN is a test that's done to see how well your kidneys are working. So these are the tests that you want to get um, and then if, you're, if you get these tests and your doctor say you have kidney damage, then what? Then you have to start working on healing the, 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 um, healing the, the kidneys. Number eight, pregnancy. Pregnant women are required to drink more water than usual in order to avoid dehydration. And thus, foamy urine can also occur in pregnant women due to preeclampsia and sub subsequent swelling and high blood pressure. This is a condition that calls for medical intervention. So if you have foamy urine while you're pregnant and you've never had it before, you really do want to get that checked, okay? Number nine, UTIs. Why? Because the presence of infections in the urethra, in the urethra urinary tract um, will cause these pathogenic microorganisms. And then we have to distinguish whether or not that organism is bacteria or if it's you know, an infection, right? So there's usually a burning sensation if you have a UTI, and that can also be acidic from the urine, plus the bacteria uh, can, and can cause that foamy urine. And then the last one, well, two more actually, diabetes. Diabetes is accompanied always by high blood sugar glucose levels. And it, you guys probably know this, but you know, having high, kid, high levels of glucose are very damaging to those little filtration units inside of the kidney. So if you have diabetes, you are just more prone to have some kidney damage that is done. And then cardiovascular disease, why? Because people with, with foamy urine are mostly susceptible to cardiovascular disease and stroke. And there can be up to four times higher for a person to have cardiovascular disease if you have foamy urine because of high blood pressure. Okay, so these are the top 10 reasons why you could have foamy urine. So again, don't panic. Uh, go, you know, check out some of these things I just shared. You know, it's, it could be, like I said, go back and check your diet. Are you eating too much protein? Go back and check to see what products you're using. Uh, could that be a, a factor? Go back and check to see if you have a full bladder or if you're dehydrated or if you have a lot of stress and anxiety, right? Or if you are eating a lot of protein shakes, if you're pregnant, right? Uh, if you are used to getting a lot of UTIs. And the thing is that some of these are short term too. So um, if you go back and, you, and, and you're getting foam in your urine sporadically, I wouldn't think it's a big deal. If it's every single day and you go back and check some of these things I mentioned and you're still getting it, then you for sure wanna go get those labs done that I referred to here in this class. And you wanna, you know, kind of see how much their damage there is and then get on a protocol that will help to reduce the proteins in the urine. Next week, I am going to do a whole class on what causes the proteins to be high besides just eating high protein. So we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about some methods that you can do to lower the proteins. Okay. So let's say that you, you know, you do have proteins due to a little bit of damage. We're going to talk about how to lower those proteins in the urine and to start the healing process of the kidneys. Okay, you guys?